Hello, I'm here to give you a flavour of dear 178 c what it is, how it fits in within the certification framework and how you work with it. RTCA dear 178 c is the primary document used by certification authorities to approve all software in airborne systems and equipment. It was developed in collaboration with EuroCAE, where it is known as ED12C. There are many software development process standards for safety critical systems. The avionic industry is strictly regulated by several certification standards, including DA178C for software, which was first published in its initial form in 1992. IEC 61508 was published in the late 1990s and it did owe much to DIA 178. A generic standard for electric and electronic systems, IEC 61508 was a turning point in the history of functional safety standards. It's been adapted to specific domains such as medical devices, automotive and railways. That said, however, there is a difference in philosophy between IEC 61508 and its derivatives and DO178C. It's important to recognise that, especially if you're coming to DO178C from a functional safety background. DO178C's primary focus is on the software development process. Safety considerations are integrated from the very start of the software product design. Safety is incorporated as an intrinsic part of the software design philosophy. By addressing safety concerns from the outset, this safety by design approach to development aims to enhance reliability, reduce operational risks and optimize safety performance throughout the development life cycle. According to the IEC, functional safety seeks to reduce the level of risk in a device or system. Functional safety identifies the potentially dangerous conditions that could result in harm and automatically enables corrective actions to avoid or reduce the impact of an accident. It is part of the overall safety of a system or device that depends on automatic safeguards responding to a hazardous event and functional safety relies on active systems that can respond to a potentially dangerous situation. The primary difference from a software developer's perspective is that DA178C demands that the software itself is sufficiently safe by design. IEC 61508 and its derivatives demand that the system of which the software is part is sufficiently safe in service. As a consequence, a software application developed as part of a system compliant with functional safety standards may not meet the DA178C safe by design criteria. DA178C doesn't exist in isolation. It's influenced by guidance documents and standards that apply not only at component and item level, like DA178C itself, but also at system level. For example, ARP 4754B introduces the notion of design assurance levels or DALs, which have a very significant impact on the implementation of the DO178C objectives. There are also several supplementary documents of DO178C which advise on how its objectives can be met in specific circumstances. ARP 4754B requires that prior to system development, functional hazard analyses and system safety assessments are performed to determine the contribution of the system to potential failure conditions. The severity of failure conditions on the aircraft and its occupants are then used to determine a design assurance level or DAL. The ARP 4754B development process allocates the associated DALs to the subsystems that implement the system's electronic hardware and software requirements. This means that the effort and expense of producing a system critical to the continued safe operation of an aircraft, for example a flight control system, is necessarily higher than that required to produce a system with less impact on the aircraft in case of failure, for example a bathroom smoke detector. 
This table shows software levels, for which software is synonymous with DAL. The tables in DA178C summarize the content of the body of the text, and this example makes clear the impact of the different levels on verification overhead. Level A demands that these objectives are all fulfilled with independence. Conversely, level D requires very few to be fulfilled at all. This principle carries throughout the whole of the process. This is an approximate interpretation of the V model on which DA178C is based. DA178C recognizes that software safety must be addressed systematically throughout the software development lifecycle. This involves lifecycle traceability, software design, coding, validation and verification processes used to ensure correctness, control and confidence in software. Several mechanisms are defined to help ensure that the processes are adhered to and to provide evidence of that adherence. The horizontal broken lines on the VIA model show the implementation of bidirectional traceability, another theme that runs throughout the DA178C document. Bidirectional traceability between phases ensures that all requirements are fulfilled and that there is no surplus code that fulfills no requirements. Collectively, the DA178C planning documents provide a comprehensive framework for the development and certification of airborne software. They are intended to ensure that all activities are planned, controlled and verified according to requirements. There are also four stage of involvement reviews specified by DA178C. These are designed to ensure that the software development processes and outputs adhere to the soft documents stringent requirements. They are policed by the certification authorities by means of SOI audits. With the background established, I'll drill a little deeper into the document itself. Let's first look at the DA178C Software Development Processes section. Five high-level processes are identified. The ideal Tools for Requirements Management 5.1 depend largely on the scale of the development. If there are few development people in an office that's large, a simple spreadsheet or Microsoft Word document may su suffice. Bigger documents and with bigger projects, perhaps with contributors in geographically diverse locations, are likely to benefit from an application lifecycle management tool. Automating traceability of both the objectives of the standard and the requirements of the project can be a challenge. These illustrations show tools that ease the pressure on the project manager's role. Static analysis tools vary in terms of their ability to identify the more subtle nuances of static violations but the more sophisticated implementations can seem slower because of the additional processing required to achieve that. A sensible approach is to choose tools with the option to run in lightweight mode and to apply more complete analysis as development progresses. Static analysis tools can also assess the complexity of the code under review to ensure that it stays below a safe threshold for the system and data flow analysis can be used to identify any uninitialized or unused variables and constants as specified by section 6.4.3F of the standard. It's important to reduce complexity. The higher the complexity, the harder it will be to understand, maintain and test the code, and as a result, vulnerabilities might remain. This is how software that's complex looks. You really don't want to have to try to understand, maintain and test this code. Now let's have a look at some of the verification processes described in DA178C. In contrast to static analysis, dynamic analysis involves executing the executable object code or EOC piecemeal or in its entirety. 
DA178C requires the use of a target environment representative of that to be deployed in the completed application. Dynamic analysis is used to demonstrate correct functionality and to show that enough of the code base has been exercised using structural co coverage analysis. Static analysis exposes the structure of the software and then dynamic analysis reveals which parts have been exercised. DA178C identifies objectives to achieve test coverage of high and low level requirements and to achieve appropriate test. Techniques will likely include a combination of low level tests, integration tests and system tests. The LDRA tool suite supports almost all of the dynamic analysis requirements of DA178C. The low-level test component of the LDRA tool suite automatically generates test drivers and harnesses, or wrapper code, enables tests to be easily and efficiently executed, and stores both test data and results. These tests can be automatically regressed. The test data maintenance program is streamlined through the automatic detection of changes in source code, prompting repeats of tests as necessary. DA178C details metrics such as statement and decision coverage that are applied in accordance with the criticality of the software and hence the DAL and software levels. The fact that MCDC coverage is obligatory for level A software is one example of how criticality impacts VNV overhead. MCDC requires that each condition in a decision has been showed to independently affect that decision's outcome. This is an example of code with multiple conditions and decisions, along with a report that shows its analysis. Source to object code traceability is another example. For the most critical systems, it cannot be assumed that the compiler is interpreting the developer's intent accurately, and traceability between source and object code must be demonstrated. There are several supplementary documents to consider when working with DA178C. Some of those shown were introduced at the same time as a parent document to cover particular technologies or techniques. Others have been introduced laterally to accommodate emerging technologies and techniques. I'll pick up on a few of particular interest to demonstrate that. The complex safety critical systems developed in accordance with DA178C depend on tools for automation and efficiency. Tool qualification ensures that the tools used for their development are dependable to an extent that is proportionate to the risks associated with any failures or errors they may introduce. DO330 is relevant to all safety critical application development activities involving software tools, including software development. These images are examples of content from the LDRA tool qualification support packages, which are designed to make the process easier. Moving on to DO331, both model-based system engineering and model-based development are addressed within DO331. MBSE the guidelines emphasize the overall system's requirements and interactions, while MBD recommendations concentrate on the software's design and testing processes. For development processes, DO331 takes the approach that the specification models or design models take the place of high-level and low-level requirements, respectively. From the coding perspective, the document cross-references the equivalent in DO178C on the basis that best practice coding-related process activities apply irrespective of how the code is generated. It also identifies various forms of verification objectives that can only be met on the target. The graphic shows illustrations of how LDRA tools integrate with both MBD tools and the target environment to make that as seamless as possible. DO332 deals with object-oriented technologies. It describes concepts and key features 
and related techniques, discusses their impact on the planning, development and verification processes and enumerates their vulnerabilities. Two standout objectives from the document are robust management of memory. For example, the document highlights how low level testing provides a mechanism to explore various allocation and deallocation scenarios to ensure that such vulnerabilities are avoided. And also, verification of local type consistency. This illustration shows how Liskov's substitution principle is applied to help prevent incongruities in inherited objects. Execution time has always been a consideration in the development of critical avionics applications. However, the advent of multi-core processors or MCPs and their increasing use in avionics has introduced new considerations. AMC 2193 was introduced to address these challenges. MCP devices usually share hardware with shared resources. For example, this diagram shows how delays are introduced as shared memory users await access. Optional LDRA tool suite modules provide the means for developers to analyze and address the related unpredictability of timing. So to summarize, DO178C adheres to a safe by design principle rather than functional safety. It is part of a much wider aviation system certification network. ARP 4754B's DALs ensure that VNV activities are proportionate to criticality. Bidirectional traceability is a core guiding principle throughout DO178C. The structured DO178C process is underpinned by planning and SOI reviews. Sections 5 and 6 detail development and V&V activities respectively. And supplementary documents accommodate specific design approaches, development techniques and newly adopted technologies. I hope that's given you a useful insight. If you have any questions, please feel free to contact us.